Well, good morning, Cathedral family. I hope and pray that this has been a wonderful week for you. Thursday morning is our uh, morning prayer is on page 407 of our prayer books. We're reading from Psalm 118, which may be found on page 347 of our prayer books. And today's Bible reading comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. So let's begin in prayer. Lord God, as we prepare to start this day, help us to put our worries with you and to rest securely in your promises. Help us to notice you in our day and help us to be your hands and your feet in this world. We pray these through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the message we have heard from Christ that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 118, verses 1 to 18. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now, now proclaim that his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron proclaim that his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim that his mercy endures forever. In my danger, I called to the Lord. He answered and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I shall not fear. What can flesh and blood do to me? The Lord is at my side. As my helper, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in flesh and blood. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put your trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I drove them back. They surrounded, they surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees. They buzzed, blazed like a fire among the thorns. In the name of the Lord, I drove them back. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. The sounds of joy and deliverance are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty things. The right hand of the Lord raises up. I shall not die, but live and proclaim the works of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined, disciplined me hard, but has not given me over to death. Mighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Grant that we, as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers of his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading today comes from St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, 
but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the sheep shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, that they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this commandment from my Father. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Mighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection may, through the renewing power of your Spirit, rise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we give you great thanks for the gift of this day. We pray for our bishops and their families, those that they love. We pray that you 
afforded them angels and archangels to watch over them and to protect them, to give them courage and strength and wisdom in all that they need to do this week. We particularly pray for our diocesan ministries, for our chief operating officer, for all who work in the bishop's registry. We give you great thanks that they work so tirelessly on behalf of the diocese. We pray for our Dean, Catherine, and for all in this beautiful community here at the cathedral. Watch over them and bless them in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our wider and national church. We particularly pray for the Anglican Communion, for the General Synod, for the Diocese of the Murray, for Bishop Keith, for all his clergy and laity. We pray this day for our parishes, our schools, and our different agencies within the diocese, particularly remembering Bishop Tyrrell Anglican College, the Camden Haven, and the parish of Wingham. We pray your blessing on them as they reach out into the communities, into their students and their families. We pray that the stirring within their hearts may come to know you as their risen Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wider community, for young children, young families. We pray for those that are struggling those who do not know the voice of the Good Shepherd, those that are worried and scared and concerned. We pray for those who suffer from mental health issues. We just pray, Lord God, that you will enable them to find good and healthy pathways to wholeness. So we pray that there will be a great sense of your presence in their lives this day. We particularly pray for the first peoples of this diocese, the Iwabakal, the Biripai, the Jackening, the Jiagwal, the Kamirali, the Waramai, the Wanarua. We pray for them, their elders, both past, present and emerging. We pray that they might find a home here in your church, a place of welcome, a refuge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord God, we pray for ourselves, for those that are close to our hearts, for our own troubles and concerns. We pray your blessing We pray your peace. And Lord God, we pray that at the end of our days, we will come to see you face to face in paradise, there with all the saints and angels to worship you forever and ever. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord and let us give thanks to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this and every day. Amen. Blessings, Cathedral family, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care now.